Yum. So, truth be told, these are a bunch of old, abandoned, tore down fence posts. Somebody was just gonna junk pile them. But this is perfect for what I'm trying to do. I am going to make bird habitat. I'm going to make bird houses. Finding old boards like this are perfect because they look natural when they've been aged and stuff, whatever chemicals are on the board, usually they've washed off. And I'm going to teach you how to make the right kind of birdhouse out of a board like this. So when I take the measurements of this board, I'm at about five and a half inches. Most boards that you find for old, especially old cedar fence posts, they're around five and a half inches to six inches. Now, as you may have seen in other videos, don't just go and make a dumb old birdhouse without thinking about what might live in that birdhouse, because it's very, very, very important. I'm thinking where I live in this part of the world, Eastern Washington, there's a whole array of birds that live out here. But one kind of bird that I really want that would actually benefit me because they eat other insects is the Western Bluebird. So I want to make a birdhouse specific for a Western Bluebird this time. But we can look at plans later that where you can make birdhouses for other kinds of birds like Northern Flickers, House Wrens, Black Cap Chickadees, all out of a board. It's just there's a couple little changes you have to make to each birdhouse to really attract the kind of bird that you want. You definitely, again, I, I just want to really reiterate this. You do not want to attract the kind of birds that are actually really bad for all the other native birds. Think about European starlings and house finches. Horrible. Not house finches, house sparrows. House finches are awesome. House sparrows are invasive species. European starlings, invasive species, they will actually wreak havoc on the native birds that are actually beneficial to around here. And uh, yeah, that's a whole nother video. Today, I'm gonna make a birdhouse out of a board. So, I looked up on the internet and I found some plans of how to take one board, let's just say this is my, my board, and I cut it in certain ways and I'm gonna nail it all together to be able to make a birdhouse. So we need a 13 and a half inch, a nine inch, a seven and a half inch, a nine inch, a nine inch, and a four inch. I'll tell you how it goes all together. Don't worry about this specific drawing because there's plans like this all over the place on the interweb, the worldwide interweb. I want to make a birdhouse that's super easy that most anybody can make with just some tools that they might have around in their house. If you don't have them, they're easy to buy from like an antique store, a uh, second hand shop or something like that. A handsaw, uh, a hammer, some nails, a tape measure, there are a couple other things, but uh, as you can say, it's pretty, ba pretty basic. Really, you don't even need electricity, which is great. Um, okay. Uh, you can do this. It's a lot easier with two people because one person can find a table or a platform like this to hold while you're cutting the boards. I don't have that because my helper is busy pushing buttons on a camera. Uh, so I have a, I have a vise. You can get all different kinds of, um, whatever vise will fit on your table. And we all have our own little vices. And this has a bunch of nails in it. I can pull those nails out with a hammer if I feel like it, like that. But I think I'm just going to cut it away. Um, this is a handy thing to have. This is a framing square. This just gets my lines straight so I don't make my lines crooked and cut crooked. But if you don't have one of these, you know, something like even a sheet of paper, you can line it up like so and make your line and there you go, 90 degrees.
using a handsaw. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it, it's easy. Okay, I have a pretty good 90 degree edge there. I'm going to follow my instructions. Uh, let's see, my first cut is going to be what I wrote down there, 13 and a half inches. From there, I have a nine inch. Seven and a half inch. Uh, the next one is a nine inch. another nine inch and finally a four inch okay I'm gonna cut all those One of these is going to have a hole. Okay. This hole is probably, you know, just like a birdhouse. I have, well, let's go take a look at all these other birdhouses I have. I have this one uses a naturally existing little knot hole, probably not big enough for any kind of bird that I want here. Um, some of these birdhouses. This is a this is a birdhouse really with a big hole. And this is for an owl. I'm trying to attract owls here because I have a rodent problem. So if I have more owls, they're eating all kinds of mice every night. So that's gonna help me out. I have a lid on top, so I hope you already know how important this is to, is to try to be able to clean out your nest every year. So uh, New visiting birds will have a nice new place, parasite free, to raise a family. Uh, yeah, this is an owl owl box. Um, some of these birdhouses can be kind of ugly and ramshackle, whereas some of these ones that I made are a little bit more fancy. I made these this year for Christmas presents. Um, here's kind of a fun one with a little design, and I made the whole specific for a. a a Western Bluebird. Here's another one. This one's for a house wren. has a smaller hole, but I made a little design out of it. And yeah, these were uh, these were just little Christmas presents. This is how I clean out the nesting box. They were a fun build, but the birdhouses don't have to be this complex. They can be simple. And if you build the birdhouse right, the bird is just as happy living in a birdhouse like this as uh, as a house like that. Um, this is a birdhouse, it's been out for a while, so it's aged, it might have a couple, couple pieces on it that I need to fix up, but the biggest thing is that I think a squirrel got in here, it decided it wanted to live in there, so it made a bigger hole, and there's a problem with just having a regular old size, just a hole, putting a, a normal hole in your bird box can invite Again, our enemy, which is the uh, house sparrows and the uh, starlings. You do not want those. With a hole that big, that irregular, you're inviting those two kinds of birds. And you don't want those, because those birds will go into the nest. If there was already a, a nest that was in there, say for example, a bluebird, they had a family in there, starlings will go in there, they find the hatchlings or they find the eggs, they destroy whatever's in there 
and then they shoo out the parents and then they take over this home to raise their own young and that'll just happen like a, like a chain reaction to all the other birdhouses in your area so this little problem needs to be remedied I will take another board probably make the right size hole which is on my directions it looks like there is the hole needs to be inch and a half for western bluebirds I'm gonna just put an inch and a half hole over a board and nail it over the top and then uh, this birdhouse is essentially as good as new. Okay, let's get back to the build. <clears throat> I need to make a hole, inch and a half. I did look up on the, on the instructions how far that hole is up on, you know. Sometimes with some birds it's important how high this hole is from the bottom of the bird box, but um, for a western bluebird, under these circumstances, it's not all that important. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna put my hole about a third of the way up. Now, I have, this is a way, if you have a tool like this laying around, or you could find it in an antique, in an antique store, this is how they made holes before electricity, with an auger, and they work pretty fast. So that, you can see, can work pretty darn fast. But today, this is just another example, probably an easier way to make a hole. If you don't have one of those, you can do it like this. I like the old ways, but I'm trying to make a video so anybody can make a birdhouse easy with the tools that they have. Somebody might have one of these, and you just get a little drill or a hole saw like this, this is an inch and a half as well. Okay. Not as, uh, as fun as an auger, but still did the trick. Okay, good. I have my, my hole there. Now I can get on to cutting. If you have electricity and you have a chop saw, you can make these cuts super fast, but we'll just do it with the handsaw. Okay, got my pieces, back, front, two sides, and I got my floor that will fit in there, and then this is finally my roof. Uh, I'm going to nail these together. This is again where having a helper next to me is always nice to have. But I can do it. Put in most of my nails in first. Again, it helps out that I've done this a couple times. It got my side easy. You'll see on this side I only have one nail. That uh, I'll tell you why later. I'm going to put my bottom on. Here you can just That's my one side. 
I'm going to put my bottom on. Now when you put your bottom on, you're thinking about, like this is the birdhouse that I made. See on the bottom, I cut the edges on the side. You can either cut edges or you can drill holes. But the reason why I have that is in the event of a really heavy rainstorm or something, you don't want water to get stuck inside the bird box. It'll act like a, like a barrel, like a wooden barrel, and it'll hold water. It could actually drown the babies or the babies will get wet inside and it just makes conditions not warm and dry like a bird wants. So if you have little drain holes, that's always a really good idea. So I'm just gonna put some real brief ones on the bottom. Okay. Yeah, just a few holes in the bottom that'll allow water to escape. Put that right on there. Okay, I got one side, one bottom. I can work on putting the top on, or the front. Here's the top. Now once you get used to making birdhouses, you can customize them to whatever you feel is right and is right for the bird. But I'm still gonna make the access to this birdhouse on the side. That's why I only put one nail here. But you can also think about fixing the sides and having the top swing open. A lot of times I'll find old hinges, like here's an old birdhouse and just an old recycled hinge works really well. Um, yeah, I have all kinds of old. Here's a bat box. Maybe we'll do a video about how to attract bats to your property so they can eat all of your mosquitoes. Um, yeah, so different ideas. But I think I'm just going to nail the top on and then... I try to put about two nails per side. When you're nailing wood like cedar, you always want to make sure that you don't put your nail too close to the edge or else that wood will splinter out. So give yourself, oh, an inch inside the edge at least. Good deal. Nail, 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 nail. Nail. The nails, you'll notice they're pretty small. They're little finish nails is what these ones are called. They're not big, huge nails because if you use really big, huge nails, they'll actually wind up splitting up the wood. So you just want to use kind of real small, narrow nails. Okay, we got all of our sides done. Well, we got all of our, except for this side. And this, 
I'm going to make it so it'll stay like that, but then I can swing it open, be able to clean out the nest, and throughout the spring when the birds are nesting, if I really want to take a look and see who's in there, I can go in there, inspect the nest, see if there's any buddy building a nest, see if there's any eggs, see if there's any hatchlings, all that sort of stuff. It's really fun. Um, okay, I'm going to put this, slide this in here. Okay, good, good. I'm going to leave a little bit of area up there. That's good breathing space. It's not too big to invite another bird. And I'm just going to put one nail in there. And I'll put another nail. If I was to make a straight line. Okay, that's a little indicator where I need to make need to put another nail right where that line is. Okay, so this side is only held together by two nails, but those two nails act like a hinge. And I can open up my bird box. And that should be just fine. Now I have leftover wood on my back from here to here. I can nail it to a tree or a post or whatever. That'll give me some material to use to fasten this bird box to whatever it's going to be, which will be another, another video on uh, where to put your birdhouse and things to look out for. But there you go. Easy bird habitat made out of a single board. Pretty much everything was free. All right, make a couple of these, make the world a better place. If you like what you've just seen, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.